please join me in a salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to have a public hearing uh, pursuant to RSA 33 colon a dash eight dash a and RSA forty colon thirteen Roman numeral two dash a uh, open parentheses C close parentheses and we'll open the public hearing at six o two for the purpose of complying with the provisions of RSA thirty three colon a eight dash a RSA forty colon thirteen Roman numeral two dash a for the purpose of uh, to take the testimony from those who wish to be heard concerning the possible issuance of bonds or notes for the following. One, wastewater treatment plant upgrades and improvements. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard? No preference, the or the Either way, no preference. Do an hour in the stationary by each day. So All right. Sit down. Richard Nichols, 9 Great Boars Head Avenue. I'd like to thank Mr. Silberdick and Zanoy for highlighting the brewery's impact on the wastewater treatment plant at the Budget Committee public hearing, which I watched. While, I'm, while I was no longer on the Board of Selectmen when the brewery came online in the spring of 2014, I was a selectman during the approval process of the federal grant that paid for the extension of the town sewer to the brewery. The brewery's potential impact on the plant, and in particular BOD levels and aeration capacity, was a concern that was vetted as far back as 2009. Why is this important? Aeration tank upgrades represent 6.6 .6 million, almost 50% of the 13.8 million town officials are requesting from the taxpayers. It's worth noting that aeration tank expansion was estimated at 1.3 million as opposed to 6.6 .6 million in the 2006 Bay Spofford wastewater treatment plant evaluation which covered anticipated growth through 2026. At a June 9th public hearing on the $800,000 federal grant to fund the extension of the sewer line to connect the brewery, I recall asking questions and doing some calculations that indicated to me that Smutty Minnows would have a very low impact on the hydraulic capacity of the plant. My recollection is supported by data in the re recent Wright Pierce report, which indicates that Smutty Minnows industrial user permit allows an average flow rate, average annual flow rate of 15,000 gallons per day, which is 0.38% of the plant's 3.9 million gallons per day capacity. At the time, the selectmen were advised that the brewery would be pre-treating their sewage prior to entering the town sewer system to assure that the loading factors, essentially the chemical and biological makeup of the gallons, would not be problematic in relation to the plant's capacity. The following is a small segment of the minutes from the public hearing that I just mentioned on the funding grant. Mr. Welch informed the board that in conjunction with the construction of Smutty Nose Brewery, the corporation is proposing closing the water and sewer line gaps on Toll Farm Road. There are federal funds available and the corporation is going to pay the town's match. This is a great deal for the town since there is no cost to the taxpayer. Mr. Nichols asked about the flow process for the treatment plant and the average usage amount for a household. Mr. Welch believes it to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 60,000 gallons per year. Again, the average household, not smutty nose. Mr. Zanoy asked about pretreatment. Mr. Welch explained that some waste must be treated on site before it is discharged. This treatment is done in various ways and can involve chemicals. Mr. Bateman added, Mr. Bateman was also a selectman at the time, added that this was discussed by the planning board, that it is a filtration system that is in place to remove residue during the brewing process. Mr. Zoy and Mr. Lally both commented that this is a good idea. Chairman Griffin also agrees that it is a good idea and closed the public hearing. Mr. Ma Mr. Bateman motioned to approve the authorization to submit for a federal grant in the amount of $800,000 to construct water and sewer lines on Toll Farm Road. Mr. Nichols seconded, vote approved 5-0. So that's the public hearing back in 2009 on the grant. A few months later, in conjunction with its review of the Smutty Nose Sewer Connection, the State of New Hampshire DES stated in an October 26, 2009 letter that, and I quote, brewery, brewery waste typically has a very high BOD loading. 
and unless Hampton can provide sufficient and accurate loading data, DES is not comfortable with approving such a connection at this time. While selectmen are not involved in individual sewer permits, I assume that there was an ongoing interaction between DPW, consulting engineers, DES, and Smutty Nose that led up to the approval of the brewery's industrial permit, and the town employees were looking out for the Ham Hampton taxpayers' interests. Now let's fast forward to 2016. At a July 20th, 2016 plan planning board meeting, during a discussion of the wastewater treatment plant capacity, DPW Director Jacobs stated, and I quote, currently the brewery sends us 20,000, maybe 30,000 gallons a day. It varies from day to day. That raised the question in my mind, why is the brewery being allowed to send 20 to 30,000 gallons per day if its user permit only permits an annual average of 15,000? And back to the loading factors and hitting, we're almost hitting the 80% level of the plant. I don't know the answer to that question, but I thought it was a reasonable question to ask. The Wright Pierce report, page 2.2-9, indicates that in March of 2014, a local brewery began discharging to the collection system and that BOD loads increased two to 3,000 pounds per day, a 75% increase in the pre-brewery influent wastewater loads. The brewery comes online, BOD goes up 75% from what it was based on the input from every other um, property in town that was contributing uh, to the wastewater treatment plant. Again, BOD levels, what's in the stuff, not the gallons. The report goes on to state that in September 2016, the local brewery modified their waste disposal program to decrease solids in the brewery sewage, but the BOD concentrations are still one to 2,000 pounds greater, that's a per day number, greater than plant loading prior to the brewery connection. The report also indicates, page 2-10, that, that for 2016, the plant had an average BOD loading of 5,805 pounds per day. So again, that total loading all properties, including the brewery, 5,805 per day, the earlier statement in the report the, of the brewery at 1 to 2,000. Thus, um, I couldn't reconcile um, the, dep the, the director's statement of 10% of total flow, but 1 to 2,000 pounds is 17 to 34% of total load um, on the wastewater treatment plant. Finally, at that same planning board meeting, Keith Lassard asked about Smutty Notes. He asked if we missed anything there. Mr. Jacobs said no. Smutty Notes had a pretreatment plant. The pretreatment plant is not meeting up to the standards that were expected. DPW is asking for additional components. It's done at their end, meaning Smutty Nose's end. Mr. Jacobs said, operationally, there are hiccups. The town didn't miss anything. Okay, you have my factual take on the history. I would ask that the selectmen reconsider the strategy for solving the wastewater treatment plant capacity problem associated with processing BOD with more sensitivity to the impact on the taxpayers. The $18 million expense of this bond, 13.5 eight plus the interest or whatever, will cost the average owner, the, the owner of an average single family home, roughly about $408,000, $2,200 over time. That's the, the, over the period of paying for the bond. So it's not um, small money to individual homeowners. I can't support this Warren article in its current form given the large amount of money associated with the aeration expansion for the reasons that I've stated. I would likely support an approach that involved working with the brewery to substantially reduce its BOD input to the plant and a lower cost warrant article that address, addresses the other issues such as replacing old equipment, HVAC, HVAC upgrades and so on, the other stuff that's in there. So at any rate, that's my um, opinion. I'd be happy to give you my presentation. There was a lot of numbers in there which you, and, and I have copies of, if I may approach. Copies of minutes, the DES memo that I mentioned, and the whole sure. thing. So Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else wishing to be heard from the public? Good evening, and thank you for holding the hearing. I have two areas of concern, and I do agree with Richard's comments on the uh, the loading by Smutty Nose. My first concern is offsetting revenue. 
uh, Richard just mentioned the burden on the taxpayers, and this is just the first of, of a proposed three bonds, totaling about $41 million without the interest over the next number of years. The treatment plant is the most critical structure in town, but taxpayers deserve to have offsetting revenues to help pay for that. I do see that you have Article 28 on the warrant, the sewer enterprise fee. I'm not familiar with that, and I don't quite understand how it works yet, but I'm sure you'll have discussions. But right now, there's nothing set in place for uh, additional revenue. Um, Wright Pierce, well, once again, uh, on page 2-11, industrial permitting recommendations. The impact of increased industrial pollutant loading plays a significant role in the remaining capacity of the treatment plant, both for current and projected wastewater conditions. Based on the existing design capacity, the brewery may be contributing anywhere from 10% to 40% of the plant's overall pollutant load capacity. And it has three suggestions for recommendations. And the third one says, apply an industrial surcharge fee for permitted industrial users to account for the cost of treating higher concentration wastewater stream. Somebody must have known about the industrial surcharge fee. Was that not discussed? Can anyone tell me? Uh, they have a list in here. Wright Pierce has a list, and it shows a sampling of local communities. Merrimack, New Hampshire, Brunswick, Maine, Rockland, Maine, Dover, New Hampshire, Portsmouth, Exeter. Why are we not charging an industrial surcharge fee? For, to Smutty Knows. You have Foss and Brazonics as well, and they may be eligible for that too. But what are we doing to the taxpayers here? Um, we have uh, we have had problems here um, with the. Which one? I'm listening, Mary Louise. Do I know? Let me enroute. I know you're you're, you're um, able to listen and talk at the same time. I understand. I that. was a teacher. But I have I have a problem <laughs> here. In 2002. Planning Board asked the public for permission to assess impact fees on development, and the public gave its approval. By 2012, Fred and I, remember Fred? I do. In December 2012, Fred and I went in and politely um, begged the Planning Board, which had not assessed impact fees, just to help the town out to get some kind of revenue on the new construction. And uh, planning board member Tracy Emmerich looked us in the eye and he said, we will never tax developers. I looked uh, at the building inspector's office about a month ago and I find that from 2002 to September 30, 2017, building construction permits were issued out of our building inspector's office with a construction value of $561,041,202 with no revenue to the town of Hampton. My second concern is maintenance and staffing. I know some of you cringed when I waved the newspaper pictures of the treatment plant about a month ago, but I have a serious problem here, and I am very reluctant to vote for this bond. I'm probably not going to vote for it until I see some of this resolved. Um, Mr. Welch mentioned, and I just mentioned it to other people, that he expects to lose 17 Public Works employees in the next two years. Five are gone already. You're going to have to be training and replacing your staff. I think you need to ask the assistance of your engineers to set up specific requirements for staffing and maintenance 
to go into effect immediately. We need to know exactly how many staff members are needed to take care of and operate that plant. We're not getting, Fred has said for the last two years, we're not getting anything done. All we do is pick up trash, and I agree with him. You're gonna need staff for the plant, not for endless trash pickups over a six to seven months of each year, you're draining your manpower. I'm going to strongly suggest to you that you discontinue the commercial waste pickup in Mary this Louise, community. Can we stick to the bond it's, issue? It's, it's draining it. Not the it. trash? You're draining it. Okay, but not the trash. We gotta stick to the bond issue, please. It is part of the bond issue because you're draining all the help <laughs> from the treatment plant. I know where you're going with that. Pick, picking up you, trash. So I would like to see you, with the assistance of your engineers, have a specific staffing and maintenance plan drawn up so the public will know exactly. I don't want to see five years from now the condition of that treatment plant that was shown in the Hampton Union. So I'm hoping you can get the maintenance and staffing lined up I don't know, you don't have much time now between the, the uh, deliberative session and the uh, voting, but I cannot at this point, absent the extra revenue and a maintenance and staffing plan, at this point, I can't bring myself to vote for that bond. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anybody else in the public? Mr. Zanoy. Good evening to the Board of Selectmen. Good evening. Um, this is my second time at bat here since I was there last Thursday at the uh, Budget Committee. Uh, Mr. Nichols uh, identified an elephant in the room, I think very appropriately. So I won't really beat that subject to death too much because I think he covered it. I'll just hit some of the high points and get on to the other parts that I think we need to address as well. It's the pollutant load the wastewater treatment plant is seeing is driving the need for aeration. Prior to the, uh, in March of 14th, uh, we were about 50% capacity, 50, 55%. Two months after that, that smutty nose came online, we jumped 75% and we were over the state limit in terms of our design load capacity. The problem started in May of 14. We, and overall, we experienced an increase of 10 to 40 percent influent load in that year. Initial increases in the load was approximately two to 3,000 pounds of biochemical oxygen demand per day. And an increase of 75 percent of that is what was experienced. We're well over 5,000 pounds per day. Town has indicated that more recently in 2016, the local brewery modified their waste disposal program to decrease their solids in their sewerage. The, two seven, the 2017 data could not be read off of a presented graph, so I don't know how we did. <clears throat> no doubt about it. Somebody knows there's the big elephant in the room here on this pollution of that, what's going into that plant. It may still be, I don't know, I haven't seen the 2017 data. The wastewater treatment plant experienced six months of being above state permits in 2014, which is when they came online, half a year. Eight months in 2015, not including one month, which was just below the maximum line. And four months, plus two very close to the limit in 2016. This does not represent timely corrective action as far as I'm concerned. on the brewery or the town's part. I mean, when you have a problem, <laughs> you need to address it with urgency. This went on for three years. I don't know about 017, could be four years. I suggest that perhaps the brewery should be the one that finances the need for the increase in aeration. The 6.6 .6 million is, represents about 50% of the 13.9 of the being requested <coughs> phase one, instead of the taxpayer. As a minimum, they should have a participatory role. 
One can say it's quite a buy for them if their taxes are 114000 a year to operate. And we pay $6 million, 0.6, to handle their waste or their fault excesses. Are we addressing the right audience? And with that, I would like to ask Mr. Welch, uh, referencing RSA 91A, for a copy of the agreement between the town and Smutty Nose before they went into operation with regards to sewers. I would really like to see just how it, how it was written, what it contains, what controls it has. I want to look at that before I conclude any further on the issue. Sure, just hang on one second. Does he need, do you need that in writing? Yes. Can you I'll put, put that in writing, writing and give it to him? Okay, I just yeah. want to make sure. Right. Email it to me. I will. Now, so that's kind of playing on what Dick said a little bit, just further enhancing it because it is the big kahuna. And I don't think working the taxpayers over is the right thing. Here's some concerns and recommendations I have. A lot of these recommendations were made in the body of that 200 plus page report. And I won't beat them to death. I did went, go through them in detail last Thursday. But here are my other concerns. To increase the revenue for the sewer plant, all the fees should be reviewed. And there's many of them in that 406 ordinance. And many that don't have any fees. There's one in particular that really grabbed my eyes. It says wastewater developmental charge. And what I think that is is a partitioning of the capacity of the plant and understanding where that partition is going and who should pay and how much they should pay to own that partition, if you will. It's interesting to me because we, we do something similar in the electronics industry when we figure out the uh, theoretical mean, mean time between failures. We look at each component and see what their partition is with respect to the total goal, and then we try to improve the design. That's a very interesting thing, wastewater developmental charge, and I don't know that it's ever been applied. That may be something we can really do. Establish penalties and surcharges for industrial suppliers who violate user agreements. According to Wright Pierce, we don't do it. Establish penalties for the sewer violations stipulated in the Ordinance 406-6, paragraphs A through G. There's a whole bunch of paragraphs, no, no, fee, no fines. And establish a penalty for anybody damaging any part of the plant. No penalties that I can see. We should upgrade this documentation before, we should improve this documentation and updo it before the upgrade. Let people in the home see that we're doing something besides looking for taxes. Control of industrial suppliers. Another one here in my heart. Because we control them very well in business industries. Very well. And, uh, you know, it amounted us, amounted us visiting their sites, looking at their records, studying what they were supposed to do for the purchase order contract, blah, blah, blah. And we controlled them. Absolutely controlled them. Is he sampling like he said he was? What does the sampling say? Where are the records? Show me objective evidence, blah, blah, blah. And of course, surcharge accordingly. It's it's not a it's not a game where we just dance with a partner. It's serious business. It's business. The sewer permit is five years past its expiration date, probably five and a half years. Let's go get it updated. Let's take the bull by the horns. The next permit may ask us to do, remove metals like copper and aluminum. If that's the case, we need a whole new process, and that'll blow phase one priorities because the permit might require an implementation date. Copper and aluminum, things like that. We went to a, a Billerica plant back in 2010, I believe. Fred, I don't think you were there. I know you were in Kennebunk with us, but Billerica was Doobie and Astle, and the guy had a big magnetic drum Circling around, trapping the copper out of the wastewater, blah, blah, blah. That costs money. It was in Massachusetts. We should go after that. Let's just not wait, sit back and hope and pray. It's a time for prayer and it's a time for business. 
I mean, you know, that permit can really uh, change the priorities in phase one in a hurry. And it's a risk factor by not having it. Oh, at the same time, at the same time, we ought to be taking the permit that we have and per White, White Pierce's suggestion, getting it changed back to the original design nitrification of the plant, which can be supported by analysis by Wright Pierce. If we get that change, it drops, it, it, it improves the millions of gallons a day we can receive, and it also lowers the, it'll also give us more headroom, more margin for BOD and TA, uh, total uh, solid suspended, total suspended solid. It'll give us more headroom, give us time for planning if we get that permit change. Right now, we're living with a permit that really has got us tightened in a, in a straitjacket. Right, Pierce mentioned several times, go do it. Let the people see this. Let's get that permit changed so that we go back to the original design of the plant, which can be nitrified, nitrified in two different ways, the current way and the previous way. And we've got a capacity analysis to show that we can handle it. And that automatically improved the millions of gallons a day received and also the pollutant margins will improve on us and we'll get a relief from that until we can plan our way out of the problem, I think. We gotta do something. Septage controls, they mentioned pull back the septage, the, the uh, septic tank uh, trucks that come around and suck out the uh, sewerage of our, our private homes and the likes. Pull back in the summer, July, August, and June, July, August. You know, reduce the deliveries, maybe to Hamptonites only and validate that what they're delivering for gallons is in fact what they're really delivering. Either with a calibrated gauge on the side of their truck or weight the truck before and after. I mean, the guy says, I'm, I'm delivering 7,000 gallons. Who knows? It could be 8,500. Controls need to be improved. Now the cost impacts. You know, phase one, 13.9 million, two, 13.7, and so on. Three years. Here are their words, Carl Wright Pierce's words. These are planning level costs developed using standard cost estimating procedures with industry standards. Doesn't mean a thing to me, sorry, okay? Did they call any suppliers? Did they find out what a 339,000 gallon aeration tank cost with the plumbing that needs to go into it? Did they call industrial suppliers with pumps and motors? Give me a feeling we did, we went to, to, to ground on this to come up with this 13.9 million, which right now appears to me to be a swag. And on top of that, they put a 30% contingency fee the school had 4%, a 30% contingency fee on top of this, what I would call swag. That's unheard of. Planning. The question was asked of the DPW director at a recent budget committee meeting if a project plan had been developed. He said, no, it will be developed after the vote. We have no plan yet. Another question followed the DPW director as to how long will it take to complete the project is I don't really know. And he came back sometime later with rationale, you know, but the initial I don't know, I think carried the day. As I said Thursday, such responses do not give me a good feeling as a taxpayer. In summary, and in closing here, the question of the industrial pollutants that affect the plant and the role, the participation of the supplier in the aeration requir uh, requirement is needed. An active sit-down discussion with Smutty Nose, the town manager, the DPW, let's get down to business here. This is an impact, this is how much it's costing us, or how much it costs us, and this is how much it will cost us if we get this aeration through. And we look for, we look for you for a participative role here. And that's why I want that agreement to see just what it says that we had made before the plant went online. Review and review the potential increase in sewer fees, the creation of a policy on industrial surcharges, septage policy changes, procedures for the control of industrial users. I love that. Oh, here's another one. No status on the pump stations. We have 15 pump stations, one is brand new. What's the condition of the other 14? 
I only been to one other. It was on High Street, and I couldn't wait to get the heck out. It was a spiral staircase going down into a dungeon with water down there. And Mike Doobie went down. I said, Mike, I'll see you on the way up. <laughs> I said, no thanks. So, I mean, one of those pump stations could be ready to fail. Wouldn't that, fa wouldn't that change phase one a little bit? So from that point of view, the right Pierce report is incomplete. But I don't think they were charged with that mission, so you can't really put it on them. C create a documented plan for infiltration and flow. We talk about sewer man covers and other things. What are we planning on doing? What's our plan? Document it. Ex extend the sewer permit or get a new sewer permit so we see what kind of risk we have. Petition the state for the original design capacity permit, like Wright Pierce is making it three or four times. They recommended that. That'll help the margin immediately. Immediately. Back us away from the precipice. No detailed project plan exists, and the cost estimates at this time look suspicious to me, and many items look like they were swagged. And they carry a 30% contingency. Lastly, here's one that... This came to me in the last few days as you read these things and think about it. An attrition plan. Should we not have an attrition plan? One that just is, you know, we put it together over time as we buy equipment. We determine how long it's good for. We, we talk to the supplier. We find out how the pump or the, or the motor was made. We determine if, if it's sealed or not sealed. Can we, take it, can we fix it periodically with new rubber O-rings or things like that? What's its useful life? Document it. Put it on an Excel spreadsheet and every year look at it and see what pops out as needing replacement. Instead of waiting till something fails, oh yeah, we got to replace it, it's failed. <laughs> an attrition plan. I mean, we just went through an ISO requirement, satisfied an ISO requirement a few years ago. We were supposed to list all our assets. I wonder if that's been updated based on the right Pierce plan. The preventative maintenance in the plant when I was there in 010 and 011 and 012, I have no problems with it. I think they've upgraded it, and providing they're following it, it's okay. I really worked hard with Mike Doobie, Steve Aslan on that, Fred even has participated. So that, part, that preventative maintenance plan, if it's being followed, will, will stand up to anybody in the state. It's computerized as well. And I hope that that's been looked at, because maybe the right Pierce report is going to cause that plan to be amended. Uh, Chris, and we have to might, you know, add items to it. I don't know. But that plan that they had in the year 210 and 211 was thorough, was detailed, and complete, and it was computerized. So I don't blame any of this on our preventative maintenance. Uh, but we need management intervention here, management and directorship intervention here. We really do. White Wright Pierce is a subcontractor. They put together, hey, what's, you know, they went through front to back. They did a nice job, aside from the pumps, the stations. They were in action on it. And they prior prioritized it for us. Now management has to come in. Wright Pierce doesn't run the, run the town. Management has to come in and quarterback this thing home. If I can be of any help, I volunteer my services. I'll leave this package with... Uh, with you, Jim? Okay, or, yes. Okay, and uh, uh, pages are numbered. And uh, you might want to make sure that I got it collated properly when I leave. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you will. Uh, I've, I've done my best, fellas. All right. Now we got to go to, we got to get down to business. Watch the page numbers, Jim, but I may have miscollated this. All right. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to speak? <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Um, having listened to Dick and having listened to Jerry, <clears throat> we are very concerned about this project and we're rushing ahead with the bond issue when there's an awful lot of questions that are being raised that I think are very valid and should be addressed. And particularly, is the smutty nose uh, participation in the increase in the uh, usage of the capacity of the wastewater treatment plant and what their financial responsibility is
to uh, contribute to the cost of that plant. I realize they're not a big company, and I don't know what the percent, the amount of money associated with the $14 million bond issue is related to them and the apportioning uh, percentage of that capital expenditure, but all that should come out to, uh, on the table as well as whether they're interested in doing it. Because even a user fee uh, to charge for what they're doing and the fact that they're already in excess of their capacity um, permit is very scary. And I think the immediate things, when you start listening to all these valid comments and uh, concerns, you know, immediate reaction on my part is put the brakes on. Let's get some answers and let's not rush to judgment. There's no question the wastewater treatment plant needs an investment and needs a continuing investment to keep it at, at a high level and, and it's proper to do it. But let's not rush into making mistakes. Let's make sure our permits are correct, make sure we're getting our proper uh, reimbursement for uh, uh, fees and for our costs and not uh, wind up having a burden on the taxpayers that would be a, a horrible mistake. And that's my only comment. I just advise you to listen to what you've been told and try and act on it in the best interest of taxpayers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Go to the board. Um, yes, having uh, listened to who spoke tonight, uh, Mr. Town Manager, is there any way that we could possibly address some of these issues or give people some answers? Because I really feel that we need the majority of the taxpayers to vote for this bond so that it does get passed. Because I believe personally that the town is a dire state, dire need of getting this work done. And anything that we could possibly do proactively, I think, yes, we do have the enterprise fees going on to the town warrant. And that's something that we need to review. And the, like I said, the, it was my idea to put it on as a warrant article because I wanted to sort of get everyone on board to let them know that we were gonna be studying it. We wanna tailor it to Hampton. If it will work for Hampton, we don't know yet. But I think there's other things that were brought up tonight that should definitely be looked at. And um, like I said, the way it works now, it's really, you, you use less, you pay more. Well, that doesn't really make sense. It should be you use more, you have to pay more. And that's just the way the world works. So if the town can do something to maybe make that a little bit work more easily so that the burden is not all on everyday taxpayers, but for people who maybe actually are making money off of the water, using the water, I really hope that we can maybe get these people some answers before the uh, deliberative session. So I don't know if there's anything we can do, but I hope there is. Yeah, uh, the DPW director would like to say yes. something. Uh, I can answer a few of uh, uh, Selectman Barnes' questions. Um, with respect to outreach, uh, to the to the residents, um, there's already scheduled, and we put it out on the uh, our website that there's a meeting at the on the 25th of January, right? Mm -hmm. It's a Thursday night. It's a, being held at the police station. The engineers will be there, uh, one on one. They can answer the, some of the technical questions that that people have. Uh, Mr. Zanoy has done an extensive amount of uh, review of the of the uh, stormwater facilities plan. He's got some very specific and pointed questions. We've asked uh, Tim Vadney, our engineer at Wright Pierce, to uh, review the, the videotapes because it goes over three meetings um, and to answer some of those questions that uh, only he can probably best answer with, uh, with uh, uh, for his, to his satisfaction. Um, with respect to that, we also have videos coming out, but there'll be more uh, informational. I know the f I reviewed the first one. It's pretty generic, as in it, it brings people along as to what even the wastewater treatment plant does. Um, the other thing you should be aware is yes, we do collect fees. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a septage uh, fee that we collect. I think last year the amount was $164,000 for 
almost close to 2 million gallons of septage. So we do collect that uh, uh, on an uh, annual basis. Uh, we also, uh, I'm trying to think of the other, oh, the other fee is the uh, wastewater access fee, and that has been basically tacked uh, $5 and 12 cents or 42 cents per gallon for new users as they come in line. We have been using that to uh, replace and upgrade some of the equipment, but it only comes in at, I would say, less than $100,000 a year. So there are revenue sources uh, that we currently do. Um, we do utilize and receive. Thank you. Okay, Chris, I will uh, have a copy of Jerry's questions, or do you want to take that and are you also mentioned it would be on a PowerPoint. I'm sure he's here. It'll get sent. Okay. Uh, we've been emailing information back okay. and forth. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Rusty, I'm sorry. Fred, do we have uh, a lot of good points have been brought up here. Um, do we have uh, information on Smutty Nose and what we need to bring them into compliance? Well, Chris could answer that, but I believe that they are currently in compliance. Uh, from what I understand, we're forcing them to truck all their waste away um, if, the, if, in fact, they have too big a VOD load. They've always had an uh, industrial discharge permit. Uh, their initial request was for uh, 15,000 gallons. I'm not 100% positive what the initial BOD loading was, but we've settled for the last two years on the number of 605 pounds per day. Um, the recent reports that I've read over the last six months to a year is they're meeting that because uh, in lieu of putting in some portions of their wastewater treatment process, they're doing that. They actually have what we call equalization tank. They dump all the load into that. They truck off the heavy material, and they've been bringing it to another facility that's uh, willing and apparently needs the food. So uh, that's what they've been doing to meet their uh, to the, the industrial discharge permit. That's what I basically have is, is our <coughs> leverage is that we, we, the town, give them an industrial discharge permit. How they meet that internally is really a matter of business internal to their plant, as long as it meets federal codes and state codes and the EPA's review and things of that nature. So uh, at this point in time, yes, they are meeting their intent of their industrial discharge permit. Matter of fact, they asked it to up it this year, and we said no. And we've a lot made them stay at the 15,000 gallons and the 605 pounds of BOD per day. But Mr. Zanoy was correct. In the early run-up period, there were days and times when they sent us excess load, and we've had... I would say 10 meetings with them, basically to bring that back in line. It has not been a something that we, uh, as a department, have ignored. Uh, with res Jerry did bring up one thing uh, with respect to the EPA permit. It's not we've applied for it seven years ago. It's not something you can walk down and get. It's not like a building permit. It's up to the EPA to issue. Uh, my understanding is we're now on our third engineer. They're uh, in the EPA in the process of issuing that. We are not alone. A number of wastewater treatment plants in this state do not have active standing permits. Uh, the rule is that we operate under the last permit that they gave us until they give us a new one. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we've, heard, we've heard a lot of good stuff here today. We've heard a lot, lot about the problems. But the big problem is that plant is very old and that we need to address some of that stuff right away. We can't afford to have that plant shut down. You think about what that does in this town if that plant shuts down. Um, you know, and, and we're dealing with a lot of stuff that was left, left to this board from previous boards. And we need, we need to start taking some time and get the things done. I agree that we need to do a better job at explaining it, uh, you guys have brought up some good points here. However, uh, bottom line is it still needs to get, the work needs to get done. Yes? Yeah, I want to mirror what Rusty just said. And also I want to say that I know Smutty Nose has been talked a lot tonight, and I understand that. You know, they're a big user. They're an industrial user. But like Rusty just stated, there's been issues that have been issues for a long time since before Smutty Nose even got here. And now we have to think about the future. We have to think about the 13.8 million that we need to spend on the wastewater treatment plant. 
And we also have to think about all the other developments that we're doing because right now we have infrastructure that technically doesn't support what we have. So just keep going on and on and on and not thinking about it really needs to stop. So I hope that everyone, you know, learns as much as they can learn about what needs to be done at that wastewater treatment plant. Everyone, whether you're a resident, a business owner, another elected <coughs> official, you really need to get familiar with it because from what I see, and I don't have any engineering background at all, it's a mess over there. So it needs to be addressed. And I hope that we can address anyone's questions that they have so that they will vote yes on that bond in March. Okay, uh, I agree there's been a lot of good points brought up. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff that has to be investigated. I, I agree that if you're dumping more in there, you should be paying more, I think. Uh, yeah. There's a lot that has to be done, but I agree with uh, what Virginia just said, that the plant really needs the upgrade, and we really need to do it, or we're going to end up in trouble. Anybody? Yes. One of the things I've asked the Public Works Department to do is to upgrade and completely rewrite all of our sewer regulations and look at all the permit fees allowed by statute so that we have that done. That's been farmed out. Uh, they're going to probably take several months to do that. It's quite a long job. I had done a draft outline of what it was. I think I had 70 or 80 pages just in the outline. Uh, they have a lot of work to do to get that done. There's a significant amount of effort that has to be employed in that. So, But I'm anticipating that will be done sometime by spring, late spring. Okay. This needs to happen. Thank you. Uh, what we're going to do is we're not going to close the public hearing right now in case somebody had uh, picked up the wrong notice. The wrong notice on 7 o'clock, and we'll leave it open in case somebody walks in at 7 o'clock to speak. I know it's 5 of now, or 10 of, so we'll just wait. And we're going to go on to the other business that we have, all right? Uh, public comment period. Anybody wishing to make public comment? Seeing none, we'll go to announcements and community calendar. Regina? I have nothing right now, Mr. It was the meeting we had earlier. Uh, the governor came up and uh, talked about the beach. It's it's a start. Yeah, it's a long way to go. Uh, however, it was good that, that he came down here with at least two commissioners and started to talk about some of the problems. We're not going to get anything done if we don't start talking about it. So, I appreciate the governor for coming down. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have nothing on the community announcements and community calendar right now. Consent agenda, veterans credits for 2018, limousine license, Robert Grand, Grand, acceptance of the sidewalk, construction, maintenance, and use agreement of 421 Lafayette Road. I'll make the motion that we approve the consent. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Appointments, trustees of the trust, year-end report on the trust funds. You're limping. Is that from sitting or just? A hip replacement, and I get real stiff when I sit for a long time. Oh, it wears off. I know how you feel. Yeah, <laughs> so, so do I. Have you had a hip replacement? <clears throat> yes. No good luck with it. Yeah. Thanks. I always recommend a, a cocktail before coming here. Well, perhaps so. Oh, loosen up. Another drive back. We are happy to inform you that we wound up the year um, with a. Uh, uh, one million nine hundred seventy-eight thousand dollar improvement in the uh, yes. net improvement in the uh, trust fund. The investment gain was, was close to two million. So the quarter was five hundred thousand. Obviously, if you can't make money in a market that goes up by forty percent in one year since the Trump uh, election, it'd be pretty poor. But we have uh, we've done extremely well. The uh, portfolio uh, is now at a record high at 22 million 200 thousand, and all trust funds are now at 25 million. So we're really uh, at a peak. We uh, contributed to the town 736 thousand dollars of uh, interest and dividends, which I think for us is a record as well. So, and we're in. Uh, continued 
state to get to come close to that again for two thousand and eighteen so now it's unrealistic to assume that the market is going to continue to zoom along obviously the the tax cut act of two thousand and seventeen that was that was passed has created a certain amount of buoyancy in the market a tremendous change in the business community's positive outlook and reinvestment in the in the economy and a general good sense of goodwill and good feeling among those in the business community and I even know our president continues to astonish us with some of the things he says from a business perspective things couldn't be better and we're hopeful that for 2018 this will continue and that things should continue to be fine for the town so all is well and all the funds and I know that you're planning on one of the Warren articles is going to reduce our funds but that's good because it's for town town road improvement so that's a great you know we've held the money there for you and it's great so good luck with that project and we have elections coming up and a new board will be will be appointed in in March I'm happy to answer any questions I know you received it no so 1.9 million yeah very good job thank you so much in the last three years it's been 3.6 and in the last five years 6.6 million increase in the town has received in the last five years 3.4 million dollars from the trust fund so all is well very good excellent report I just caution people that when the market's going up everybody loves it right when a correction comes everybody starts blaming everybody else absolutely and we have to accept that markets go up and markets go down absolutely if it goes down again and we have problems we've got to accept that aspect that we're well diversified but it can go down but we have also are in a position where we've mitigated our risk I mean we didn't make the max amount of returns we could have we're in some growth stocks and some value stocks and they sort of weigh against each other so if one goes down the other one goes up and we have a big investment directly in bonds so that doesn't make any difference what happens we gain the income but your money is safe and we're very pleased with all the professionals that are helping us doing a great job thank you thank you very much and I hope the hip feels better thank you Christy Pulliam, Finance Director, first pass of year, year numbers, year end numbers. Yes. Actually, before I sit down. And we'll give you each one of these. So basically, at this point, I have not generated any financial statements, so there's nothing online. Thank you. This is basically just a discussion to have with you guys to propose a to give you a list of the different Warren articles that Fred and I will hopefully be coming have set firmly for next week and be coming to you guys asking you to vote to carry that list of Warren articles forward I also attached there um, the end of year purchase orders Fred and I still we ended up getting bombarded with a few other issues today so we didn't have time to sit and go through this but this is my best pass at it. I need to sit with Fred, make sure that he and I are in agreement. These will be the purchase orders that need to be brought forward by the Board of Selectmen. Um, and then I did a quick run through of numbers for end of year, and I'll just kind of run through that. I just didn't generate a financial report, so there won't be a, it won't be posted online yet. That will hopefully be done by the end of this week for my first pass. But basically, we still have bills to be paid. No one at home have probably has all of their bills and we're a town. So today in the mail, we got a stack of electric bills like this big. So we still have bills to be paid. But after our second payables in 18, which were 2017 bills, we look to have about $438,746. I also have to do journal entries for a crude payroll that totaled 206,256. So that would leave us being underspent 
by approximately $232,490. However, when you look at the different Warren articles that we're um, going to be proposing that we carry forward next week, you're going to be turning back to the unassigned fund balance about 161472 which would leave us with about a net under expenditures of 393962 So when I was talking to Regina earlier, the question was asked to me last week at the public hearing. I'm still going to stick with at this point that we're going to end the year. My hope is to end the year with expenditures being underspent anywhere between three and 500000 That's a big number, but it's not a big number when you're looking at like a $27 million budget. So um, that's kind of where we are at. We just put me on the agenda so you guys can kind of have our first little discussion. People, everyone's asking, you know, where are we? We're getting there, but it does take time for us to get all of the bills paid and get you guys good numbers. So that's just kind of where we're at. Um, you guys will have time to look at this Warren article list. That way, if you have questions, because a lot of times you get those the night that you're voting on them, but now you have them for a week, you can look at those. And then the list of the open purchase orders. And as soon as Fred and I have a chance to review it, I will generate them once again and send them out to you guys. But that looks like to be where we will be at uh, for Warren articles and purchase, open purchase orders for the end of the year. Very good. Uh, Regina? Um, no questions. Thank you very Trusty. much. No questions. And no questions. Good job. Uh, good job. Can I bring up another thing that's not on your agenda? No. Okay. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, the bond sale was last week. Yes. On Thursday, I believe. And so we got an interest rate. I think I announced at the public hearing the interest rate was 2.16 on the 10-year bond. Um, I have all of the bond documents because the closing date is coming up on the 24th, I believe. So you need all of the documents back. So if I could leave those with you to sign while you're uh, sitting here tonight, and then you can give them back to Fred. But So it was a $1.1 $1 .1 million bond. Um, and it was a 2.16% interest rate for 10 years. Just to Super. remind nice. everyone yeah. what it was that we bonded. It's a Lafayette Road project. Super. So I have those documents here yep. for you. Do you want to leave those? That'd I would love to good. leave those. Do you have anything else now you want to? No. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> I wish we could share that bond rate with uh, everybody in town. Yeah, I know. I, I would. I uh, to redo our mortgage. <laughs> yeah, because I have that rate. <laughs> So I will be here next week with hopefully some firmer numbers for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We've already voted on this, right? So we don't. Yes. This yeah. all the time. Thank you very much. Uh, da, 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 da. Approval of minutes, January eighth, two thousand eighteen. So moved. I was. Second. Abstain, yeah. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain. abstain. Two one. Approval of minutes, January ninth to it. 2018 non-public session. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, all in favor? Unanimous. Um, budget article vote. What do we need to do there? Uh, you have to make a recommendation on all appropriation warrant articles. That's the warrant article proposed by the budget committee for the main budget of the town. Okay. And you can either vote yes or no. Was it changed? No. They, they didn't make any changes. No, they didn't. Well, From so the last what was already voted on? Well, they voted on it. Uh, it was an interesting vote because I think it was 6-4-0. Yeah. So they didn't uh, unanimously approve their own budget. But we did make, can I, sorry, we did make some corrections. Well, mostly it was what they Christy were had brought forth to us. Right. And then there was a couple minor okay. tweaks here and there, but... But it's basically the same? Do you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the town's operating budget. I just don't have the amount in front of me. That's okay. The town's operating budget as approved by the Budget Committee? Yep. As proposed second. by the Budget Committee. That's both. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. You want to pass that into that? Yes, sir. Uh, 2018 town warrant. Um, Town warrant will be signed on the 22nd. It has to be posted by the 29th, which is your next meeting following that date. Okay. Um, I think it's 29th. Uh, I have to look. Yes. 22nd will be your next meeting. 
Uh, the 29th is the meeting following. It has to be posted by the time you meet the following week. So we will have the warrant completed for you on the 22nd, which will be next week for your signature. Okay. So we take a vote on it now? Nope. Nope. Okay. Just need to announce that. Okay. Petition warrant articles. You, you have already um, made a recommendation on all petition warrant articles that you care to make yep. uh, recommendations on. So we're done with that. There is a hearing. I believe it's tomorrow night on the only petition the zoning article, which is done by the planning board. So they will okay. make the recommendation on that one. All right. So we're set. As far as I'm concerned, okay. we're set except for signing the warrant. Okay. Closing comments. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. All right. Oh, well, wait a minute. We have to close the uh, public, public, hearing. public hearing. So what I'd like to do is close the public oh. hearing on the bond at. Uh, 702. Second. All in favor? All right, that's closed. Uh, closing comments on tonight? Nobody? Uh, anybody want to make a motion make to a adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Very good. Thank you, Channel 22. Thank you.